Hey guys, how's everyone doing? I'm going to do um, a couple of ask videos, hopefully before the final episode of the season drops. I'm kind of bummed that we're at the end of the season, but at the same time, uh, on to season three as fast as we can get there, right? <laughs> All right, so let's see what questions you guys have today. Um, first one. The worst of the carolers are coping hard with excuses. <laughs> yeah. They think a new showrunner that reigns in Norman Reedus will solve how he plays the character, as if a decade of friendship is going to change. They had years to do Carol as a romantic partnership and never did. Norman clearly does... I think you mean does not want canon Carol to happen, maybe at one point in earlier seasons. Hypothetically, how would that even look to the fans? Norman begrudgingly playing romance with Carol, lol, as if Melissa wants that either. They're so over it whenever asked. Yeah, I agree. Um, I totally agree. And the other thing to remember is that the Carolers are just one relatively small portion of the fandom. Um, they are one of the loudest and one of the most vitriolic, unfortunately, but um, they are a very small portion. And while other people, you know, just like you said, maybe at some point things might have been different. And I don't think they ever actually were. I don't think there was ever a point where they were planning to do Daryl and Carol, but um, I think it was during season two, it may have been on the table, but what I mean is, like, they never actually made a hard and fast decision to do that. It was just like, we don't know where we're going with it yet, and it's a possibility. And then, as I always say, the beginning of season three, they pretty much shut it down um, with the whole thing on the bus and then laughing about it and deciding that that would be ridiculous if they got together. Seeing the characters interact that way, that was the writers telling us that's not the way they're going with it. They're kind of acknowledging that Maybe in some world it was possible once upon a time, but that's not where they're going with it. Um, and what I've seen in the last few years is I've seen a lot of fans that have nothing to do with shipping wars, that aren't, they're not Bethel, they're not Carol, they're not pro Connie, nothing. And and they have even been saying, eh, we don't really want Carol and Daryl anymore. Like, eh, they've, it's been too long and they're too squarely friends and we just don't see it anymore. So understand that, the writers aren't just seeing us, as in <laughs> the TD or say that. They're seeing most of the fandom say that. And I don't even mean to say that they are responding to the fans by not doing Carol. They they orchestrated that. They made sure that the way that they put it in the show put them squarely in the friend zone. That's the that's the response they want the fans to have. And it's worked because they've told the story. Uh, efficiently to make sure that we understand that this is not a romantic relationship. So, you know, of course, there are certain people who refuse to understand that reality, but um, I think that's willful misunderstanding. It's not anything that's wrong on the part of the writers. And yeah, I'm, I've had people sending me, um, <laughs> you know, asks from Carol accounts and things like that. And yeah, it's... Um, it, it's it's getting pretty ludicrous at this point, some of the, some of the things they say and the things they're doing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, I totally agree. Thank you. Um, when it comes to people he cares about who have died, we've only seen Daryl cry very few times for Merle, for Beth, for Glenn, for Rick, and for Connie, even though Rick and Connie didn't actually die. What do you think it means that we didn't see or hear him cry for Isabel, even though he spent a significant amount of time with her and even took the first step into the possibility of a, a relationship with her? Um, it comes back, I think, to something I've talked about several times, um, and it was something that Norman said in an interview where he said it was an experiment. So, okay, there's a few different ways I could take this. Number one, it's important to know that he was not in love with her, which we've already established, right? Um, so he would be sad for her. I, I almost saw the way that he cried for Isabel a lot the way he was sad about Andrea. We didn't see him actually shedding tears, but we saw him there when she was bitten, and he was clearly very, very sad. Um, so that's kind of how I see Isabel. I mean, he cared about her just like he cared about Andrea. Yes, it's true that him and Andrea were not in a relationship, but um, it, it's kind of like that. Like, she's his friend. He does care about her, but it's not like this deep abiding love because they just never got the chance to get there, right? So there's that. The other thing that I see specifically for these, I don't know, specifically, I guess, for Merle and Beth and Glenn, not as much Rick and Connie, although sort of, is him feeling responsible for it. Um, he felt very responsible for Merle and Beth and Glenn's deaths. And not, like I say, not as much for Rick and Connie, but I think it was like, he felt like he should have done something to prevent them, even if it wasn't squarely his fault. Not that any of them were squarely his fault, but from his point of view. 
Um, and I don't think he really felt that way at all about Isabel. Um, and, and the other thing I would say is I do think we saw him cry for her a little bit. Not, not obviously in nearly as big a way as we saw for Beth or even for Merle or Glenn or any of them. Um, but a little bit, we did see it. I think um, in her death scene, when he put his head down and Carol, I think Carol puts her hand on his shoulder. I think that is supposed to be him crying. We don't see tears because his head is down, but I think that is what that's supposed to be. And then I noticed in this last episode, in episode five, when Laurent said that Isabel told him that she loved Daryl, he, he got pretty teary-eyed about that. He, he had tears in his eyes. So I, I do think that we see him cry for her a little bit, just so that we're, you know, not avoiding something that was true. But I think it just has to do with the depth of emotion. I mean, yeah, a lot of people notice this, that like one episode later, he's still sad about it, but he's not paralyzed by it. He's not like in these horrible depths of grief or anything. You know what I mean? He's already kind of moved on. And yeah, part of that is that he was really wanting to find Laurent and make sure he was okay. And there's a lot going on, but even so, um, we definitely did not see him this move on this quickly with, um, with Beth or with Glenn or with Rick. I don't know, Rick and Connie, I, I guess you could say that maybe he, he kept going with them, but he was looking for them for a long time. Um, so part of that, I think, was, it's just a little bit different in every instance. I mean, part of that was not having a body, you know, it's not like he needed to go looking for Isabel. She died right in front of him. He had her body. Um, that was not true of Rick and Connie. Um, and we, we didn't really see as much with Merle. We saw, uh, obviously, tears in a big way at the point when he discovered Merle. And then it kind of jumps to the next episode, and he's okay. He's doing better. But again, there's a little bit of a time jump there. So it, it's probably stuff that, you know, we didn't see. Anyway, so, I, I mean, I'll stop rambling now. But it's just a matter, I think, of the depth of feeling he had for her. And again, it wasn't that much. And I, I, <laughs> I hate to say it that way because it sounds like I'm being snarky about it or a jerk about it. I just mean he was not heavily, heavily in love with her. He had not known her for very long. You know, people like... Rick and Merle, they're his brothers. You know what I mean? None of those things applied to Isabel. So um, like Norman said, they were just starting the relationship and he did care about her, but not as deeply as some of these others. Um, and then I also don't think that he necessarily blamed himself for her death, which on a lot of these others, he did. Hopefully that answers that. Um, could you point me in the direction of the script leaks that showed Daryl mentioning Beth in season two of Daryl Dixon? Um, yes, I'll tell you what, I will find some of the posts that were written about it. I'll see if I can, I'm pretty sure I have the, the pictures of it somewhere, and I can, uh, I'll just put everything in the show notes of this episode on, um, YouTube, and so you can take a look at them. But yeah, um, I don't know that I directly did a post post about them, I obviously talked about them in my videos, um, so I'll find someone who posted the pictures, and I'll, I'll give you the URL for that. Um... Next one. Not sure if you saw the season two finale yet, but I'm really confused why Norman hyped it up so much. To say it's the best in TWD history is just false. I know he is biased and it's his baby, but he can't really think that ending is worth that kind of hype. I feel like there is something we are missing that hasn't been spoiled. If not, he needs some humble pie. Um, yeah, this is something I wanted to talk about because I do think... I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love if there was something that hadn't been spoiled yet and they give us a coda or something. Um, we can hope for that. But overall, I, I haven't seen the entire finale, but I've seen enough leaked clips from the kind of the ending of it to basically, I, I know basically what happens and how it all comes together. Um, you have to understand, and this is why I've been stressing this so much this season, is that it's all about the internal, it's not about the external. So, assuming that we don't get any kind of coda and Beth doesn't show up in some capacity, um, I think the reason that he would be hyping it so much is because of the internal arc. He, you know, this is why I was, I keep going through like Carol fighting her demons and Daryl trying to figure stuff out. There's going to be some stuff about his grandfather, which started in season one, right? When he talked about his grandfather having died in France and then he sees the grave and that's going to kind of come back around in a big way. But I think what he's liking so much about it is that we're seeing Daryl change in a big way that's important. And 
we're seeing, um, we're basically going to get to a point without spoiling too much where Daryl and Carol are both going to have almost separately, almost independently of one another, the opportunity to give up and decide they don't want to keep going and die. And what we're seeing is the two of them, where, where there were times in the past they probably would have taken it. I mean, they didn't really have the opportunity. Like, neither of them is, is the suicidal type, right? Um, but if, I'm just saying, if Daryl had found himself in this particular situation, what we're going to see him in in episode six, right after Beth had died, he might not have chosen to get up and keep going, right? Um, but here, I, I mean, this is after all of these deaths have happened. This is after, um, you know, the fact that he doesn't have Rick anymore, he doesn't have Merle anymore, he doesn't have Beth anymore, you know what I mean? If he, all of these things, and then on top of it, he's just lost Isabel, he's in France, all this stuff is going on, and he's still going to make a decision to, as Isabel says in the, um, in the leaked clip, to bet on hope. And so, number one, I think he's really talking about the internal arc and how much he felt the change that Daryl was going through. Um, I think that is going to disappoint a lot of people based on how much he hyped it up, but you just have to understand where he's coming from with that. I don't think it was ever going to be like this massive action-packed, this is why it's so cool kind of thing. You know, it's, it's really about him seeing the internal arc of the character. Now, the other thing that I want to point out, though, is that if the line about where he says to Isabel, um, if you see, I'm probably going to screw it up here, if you see Merle or Beth or Glenn, tell them I did the best I could, or whatever it was that he said when he mentioned her, and that gets cut from what I understand, it's not going to be in there. I would love it <laughs> if all the, the leaked ones were wrong and they put it back in for the one they showed us. That would be awesome. Anyway, but keep in mind that if that line is being cut out, the finale that Norman is talking about, he might be considering that line as part of it. And that's really important. I, I, I wish they wouldn't cut that out because it makes the internal journey that he is on and that he is going through in that moment much more clear. So it bugs me that they're cutting it out, you know, even aside from the fact that I obviously want him to be mentioning Beth. Um, so keep that in mind too. I mean, there's lines in there that might have made it a lot more emotional for us that seem to have been taken out. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think that some people are going to be disappointed because he hyped it up so much. But as somebody who <laughs> I love to look at the internal arc and I teach fiction writing and I'm always harping about the internal arc and how it's foundational for what's happening in the plot, I can see where he's coming from. So even though I know that other people will probably still feel like he overhyped it, and okay, I mean, that's really a personal opinion, whether he did or not, um, I just, I'm saying that I think I, I can see where he's coming from. And even if you don't agree and think he overhyped it, I actually enjoy the fact that he likes it so much that he is really, really identifying and loving the, the journey that Daryl is going through. So it doesn't bother me either way, but I do understand that other people who are not seeing that, and especially as the line seems to be getting cut out, it's not going to have the same impact as it would for him, who is actually, you know, living it and acting it out and has seen those lines that have been cut from the script. So um, hopefully that hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, all right. Hi. So I haven't been following TWD f since a while, but I stumbled across this video. I might have found something strange. It's basically nearly morning here, but my brain can't seem to connect the dots. But Theo and Didi, they look familiar, mainly Didi, and I couldn't point out from where. Now I, now I know, though. Check out this painting, American Gothic from Grant Wood. The farmer's daughter is very, very, very similar to Dee Dee, the hair, the visuals, even down to their outfit. The art piece is in New York, and as I read, it was said to be the American's answer to the Mona Lisa. Please tell me I might be onto something. That's awesome, actually. That's a really great um, connection. I hadn't seen that before. So I am familiar with American, Go American Gothic? Yeah, American Gothic. It's, it's a very famous painting. Um, and I think I've even heard that, that it's the American's answer to the Mona Lisa, but I just, I didn't really remember it until I'm, until I'm reading it right now. So I will put it on the screen so people can see it. But yeah, that's a, that's a really cool connection. I don't know if they used it for inspiration. They very well may have. Um, because yeah, here I looked it up and it says that 
American Gothic, often referred to as the American equivalent of the Mona Lisa, meaning it is widely recognized by Americans as quintessential piece of art. Just as the Mona Lisa is globally known, both paintings are frequently parodied and discussed for their mysterious subject matter and enduring appeal. So it's not so much that the subject is the same, it's more like in popular culture, they, you know, the American Gothic painting is that coming from an American artist versus the Mona Lisa, which is coming obviously from a, uh, a European artist. Um, but it does say that they're, they both have mysterious subject matter. So yeah, it's, um, it, that's really interesting. I, I, had, I don't know, I'd have to kind of sit and think about what that means. L assuming that they are using it, if they, if they really did go to that for inspiration, there's really no way to know. But if they did, I mean, I suppose it makes sense um, in that the Mona Lisa would represent Europe, which is where they are right now. But of course, our main characters, Daryl and Carol, are American. They're not European. So maybe like representing both cultures in some way. And both of them are used really, really heavily with Beth symbolism. So I, that's really interesting. Um, I'll have to think about that more. And I bet my fellow theorists might have a few um, thoughts on it. So maybe I'll come back to that. But I, that is one that I, that's a, a connection that I hadn't seen before. So great job with that. <laughs> I will I will definitely think on it more. But yeah, I do think you could be onto something. Um, no, let's see. I'm just reading through your through your ask again. It's it, you know, you know what else this makes me think of? And again, I, I may just be plucking things that don't actually go together. But it actually reminds me a little bit of the red machete in the sense that um, when I first watched that, I thought that the two main characters, there was the man and then there was the young woman, and I thought that they were a couple. And people had to tell me, no, 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 they're not a couple. That's like father and daughter. And the reason that was odd to me is just because the father looked really young. And I was, But then once they told me that, I was like, oh, okay, I can see it now. I, I think I was thinking he was younger than he was. But in this case, they say that in the American Gothic painting, people think of the woman as the farmer's wife, and she's actually his daughter, which is interesting. Um so yeah, I don't know. I, I I will think about that more and see what else I can find on it. But everyone, tell me what your uh, what your thoughts on that are as well. But yeah, great great job coming up with that connection. I really really like that. That's fun. All right, guys, I'm gonna call it there for today. But I will be back and hopefully do at least one more asks video um, before the final episode on Sunday of the season. All right, talk to you later.